okay uh, here at the property to do a tour uh, this is my driveway basically uh, it's about it's 15 acres of land here um, got neighbors on the either side of me that way and that way uh, but I pretty much own all the way there and then a little bit or sorry I if I get this property I'll own all the way back there as well uh, so I own this portion back here um, land is pretty flat in the listing itself it shows that the um, you know the, when the grass is cut it's about like a foot tall in some areas man it's pretty bad but um uh, not bad at all in terms of like the buildings and stuff uh, the realtor will be here in a little bit but these are the trees I'd probably plant more trees along this like driveway here uh, I think that'll be a nice looking feel like this looks like it's gonna be something pretty soon I'm not sure what but that's pretty freaking that's tall as shit like that's probably as tall as me yeah like if I get out of this truck like it's as tall as me I'm sitting in a Ford Explorer and it's still that tall. So, um, gotta go, gotta get this cut. I gotta see how much that's gonna cost to clear all this stuff out and go from there. Uh, liking it so far. Liking it so far. We'll see how it looks uh, on the inside. Uh, does have internet to the property, uh, AT&T and a local coaxial like Spectrum Xfinity uh, company comes out here as well. Uh, that's the home itself, 1,600 square feet. That looks like the water pump system for the well. Uh, a little bit of a dip here. But a um, lot of room, a lot of space to do stuff. Maybe, maybe another building, not sure. But might not, depending on, like, you know, all the taxes and all the other stuff you got to deal with. But, yeah, uh, not too bad out here. It's the property itself. Uh, definitely looks like somebody came in, renovated it, flip, and is ready to flip it. Um, if you look at the Google Maps, or if I look at the Google Maps for this place, oh, that's the realtor behind me. If I look at the Google Maps for this place, um, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty tore up. But um, let me do this tour, and uh, I'll get back on video once I uh, talk with the realtor here. Just gonna park up in this huge huge field of grass here what looks to be the master bedroom here water heater and the condenser unit I believe uh, decent size decent wall size as well good view the windows not bad to start. I'm gonna come out here, man. Okay. I don't know if you want to be on video. I don't mind, but some people don't like it, you know. All right, so this is the open area, the living room area. Okay. Comes around to the kitchen. Cabinets, definitely. One of the few things that, uh, one of the first things that need to be replaced in terms of looking at the uh, bathroom as well and the master bathroom. I'm noticing shaky cabinets. Definitely something that needs to be looked at, but good enough to get started. This is one of the rooms. Definitely a spot for an office. Then we have a shared closet space between the two rooms. These rooms are probably about six six by six no no a little bit more like no like 12 maybe about 12 by 12 and probably about 12 by 12 maybe a little bit bigger and the rooms decent size uh, total square footage of the home is 1600 plus just a little bit over 1600. This is the wash area. Definitely can put some of the audio video stuff in there. This electrical panel, uh, definitely I would like to possibly replace, but I don't think it's bad or anything. So that's not an issue. Definitely not an issue. AC works, feels cool in here, especially when we got in. 
exterior door. Uh, decent property, nothing really to do in terms of move in. It's pretty much it's move in ready. Uh, anything else would be nitpicking on this. And uh, even comes with drinks. So that's cool. All right. Uh, outside, they do have a covered carport area or carport like area. So it has a pad out there that's good. Uh, grass. Not bad at all, especially with all the rains. Uh, plumbing works. But I don't think I'll taste the water yet. Uh, plumbing works from what I saw. Didn't test a shower, but I'm sure it works in the bathroom and everything. As long as water's running. But uh, yeah, good to go. So this is a property. Goes out to right about there. And then there's a barn. Need some different renovations in there, but very uh, well built in my opinion. And the property line goes quite a far bit back. So we're like really in the middle of the property uh, right now. That little home, get rid of that. Uh, there's another shed out there as well. But uh, very pleased with this and uh, definitely decent. So plumbing and everything works, looks good. Uh, just things to be cleaned up in a lot of areas, but as long as I have the time to do so That'll be the least and then also here uh, Have the fence right there. That's uh, my neighbor right there. So Yeah, really do like it uh, Taking another video here gonna take a drive out to another portion of the property uh, it's, it's pretty big. They have a horse ring here uh, again, that definitely needs to probably be turned torn down and see how far I can get over here Property goes a ways back There's a lot of nature out here. There's freaking bugs everywhere, but not too too bad um, Land from what I saw is pretty flat uh, Actually decent grade and everything like that uh, That's a horse ring Again, like you know list price is about 189 grand right now there's a couple things that probably can and should be done to it, of course. But driving through it, uh, as you can see, there's like the prop, there's a little fence there through between those trees. Oh, and it looks like it dips over here. Uh, it's probably a lot to like clean up and figure out here. So I'm gonna back up. Hopefully, I don't get stuck or anything. Uh, I don't see too much of any fall offs here. Uh, seems like the the sensor's picking up a couple of things, but this is a damn near safari to get up through here. And those are weeds, supposedly. That's what they, the lady was saying. <laughs> so that's pretty big. Barn, really nice, I think. Um, I think I will be putting in an offer for this home. Uh, I'm liking it. Definitely liking it. Um, 189.9. Uh, oh yeah, 189.900. Uh, I will be putting in an offer probably for about 180, 175 or so. Or no, so one, yeah, probably yeah, probably closer to the 180 mark. And see what they say. Also covering closing costs and other things as well. See if they can actually do that. Looks like this is the water pump here. I think. I think that's the water pump. Let me check that out. Probably won't hear me because I think the mic picks up from the car. Agent is already gone. This is another shed here. Didn't check this out. That's a decent shed. Oh wow. Decent sized shed in there. Lawn mower and stuff like that. That'll be good. Same thing over here. Yeah, so this is the well pump here. And that looks like it's working and everything too. 
that will have to be inspected. Shed looks good. They've uh, refurbished the shed, so that's really nice. Property goes, whoa, whatever the fuck that was attacked me. Um, property goes pretty far. Damn it, a lot of bugs. Let me close my truck. Hopefully you can hear me, but property goes pretty far. You can kind of see cars out there. Um, this is, reminds me of Jamaica, back home. But uh, yeah, let's drive off. Uh, hopefully you, could hear, you heard that. But check the pump. You know, that's working because, you know, plumbing works in the home, water's running. Really a lot of cosmetic stuff, which I am totally okay with. Um, and yeah, we'll be, we'll be looking to put an offer on this thing. You know, uh, it's probably estimated probably over a thousand plus to do an initial clearing of the property. Seems like it hasn't been kept up in terms of like, you know, what, uh, what's it called? In terms of just cutting everything. But once everything's clear cut, then I can start really picking away at things month by month. But literally, that's my driveway. That's, that's, that's really nice. That's really cool. I love that. Um, probably line this with trees. Uh, but uh, yeah, like we're probably halfway down the driveway and we still got, you know, halfway down the driveway and the home is back there. So that's really cool. <sighs> yeah, great. I'll have to look at this and I also see if there's any programs that can actually get me down payment and assistance and everything else like that. That way I don't have to liquidate any of my own assets. Uh, I mean, it will probably cost me more in some cases uh, to get this type of property and get that type of assistance because uh, in some cases it could cost. Some In some cases it's a grant. In some cases you can roll it into different things. So there's probably a lot that I can do here and I will be talking to the loan officer but uh, yeah that's my neighbor actually right behind that that neighbor only owns like a sliver of property right like they own like a little frontage probably goes a couple feet back probably about three car lengths or so uh, probably a little bit more than uh, probably a lot more than that <laughs> probably like six or so more or something but behind it the person that owns that property behind them owns like all the way down there to the street and it's like over a hundred something acres man it's it's crazy it's a lot of land but um i think this is great for this is way more than enough for a first home and i could do quite a bit with it uh so far i am pretty pretty impressed uh wow been on the market for 120 something days uh and if everything works out this will be uh this will be mi casa but uh, more to come from that. All right, talk to y'all later. So this is our second property of the day. A uh, little Asian feel to it, little sh uh, shogunate uh, Naruto anime vibe. Uh, it's got a little bridge here. Um, the area is is uh, in the hills, so there are some rolling hills, different elevations. Uh, essentially, my neighbor is kind of like up at an angle, and they can pretty much view me. Um, there are two vehicles here, but what's nice about this property, uh, it fizz, uh, you know, look, looks wise, it's not that nice, but, um, this property has two, uh, actual two like ex extensions or buildings. So this one is a standalone apartment, if you will. And then there's another one over there behind those cars where that is connected to the main home via the breezeway. Um, this is sitting on about 10 acres. Uh, most likely that is 10 Haley acres uh, already thinking I will probably not take this but I am gonna go through the uh, I'm gonna go through the tour and see what happens but it's it's just a property where a lot of work has to be done in comparison to the other one it's a this is a larger home uh, this is probably about a thousand square feet and the other addition is probably about uh, 1200 square feet and then the home, the main home, is probably about 1,600 square feet or so. So, um, yeah. Just going to be uh, chilling out here. It's got a garage. So, it's a distressed property. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. 
and there's a reason why it's still vacant so all right i'll just be waiting for the realtor here hey just wanted to do a video uh this will be going at the end of all the other clips uh i didn't really have those Let me switch lanes i didn't really have those like set up a nicer certain way or anything like that but um uh, this is after I'm heading back home uh, Been having a hard time like staying awake driving so I just like every rest stop I've just been sleeping for at least 30 minutes getting back on the road. I should have been home maybe like an hour or so ago But almost there now and taking some five-hour energy drinks, but I will be crashing hard as fudge when I get home um, So after all those clips and everything else like that I saw that second home uh, as I'll probably include that video, but that place was a complete mess, total shit shithole. Uh, I, 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 the smell was horrendous. Like I can still taste the like the like the wet carpet, and it was just unkept. Like the place just needs to be totally knocked down and start over again. Like it's just that bad. It was horrible. Anyways, uh, we'll be putting in an offer as I've said before on that first property. And um, I'll probably be going with 175. And if 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 they if they allow me to make a couple requests, so that's 175 is where I'm I'm looking at. That's like fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars off of the uh, listing price. Um, haven't had an appraisal. That'll come in time. Uh, inspection still needs to be done. But what I'll be asking for is 175 175k. And if they take that, they don't have to do anything. I take it pretty much as is, except for anything that the inspection um, reveals that they have to just do, right? Just so I can make sure that it's a decent property from that standpoint. It shouldn't be any, uh, it looks like it shouldn't be anything. We'll see. Um, if I, if, if they don't like that and they want a higher price, I'll be like, okay, no problem. I'll give you a little bit more money, but that means you're going to have to cut that yard, the whole entire 15 acres, cut it to level, trim up all the trees and stuff like that, um, because I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to pay probably maybe even two grand, maybe even more, especially if I start trimming trees and such. I'm probably going to have to pay about two grand to go across all 15 acres, trim all those trees and get them looking right to the point where I can start seeing what's on the land and then start removing things too because um, I have uh, wooden posts and that, uh, that horse ring that's there. I got to take that out because I don't want it. I don't need it. Uh, I don't plan on having the horses or, or, or any horses there. I actually plan on taking that barn and um, actually finishing the barn itself uh, and actually pretty much renovating that barn and turning it possibly into an office over time because it does have an upstairs uh, section to it. So I may turn the upstairs section into uh, an actual enclosed office, insulation, AC, all that shit. So I might be doing that. Um, and then... Uh, and then the downstairs will be like a woodworking shop and stuff like that Especially if my dad ends up living there at some point, you know, that would be great for him great for me Because we could just work together on stuff like that. I don't know. We'll see uh, my dad's a cabinet maker by the way for people that don't know so um, Yeah, and then like, you know, I'll, I'll document most of this stuff as I'm going through it. Uh, I'll try and do as much as I can um, But that's 180k. Uh, so all like all of these all include like at 175 cover closing costs, uh, 180 cover closing costs, and trim all those trees. You can get whatever quote you want. I'll give you five extra thousand dollars, and then if you get a quote that says three thousand dollars, that means you got two grand in your pocket. I don't fucking care. I'm trying to give them like you know benefit of the doubt or a fair value because I think the home is worth. 189k is not bad for that home like it's really a lot like I, I think it's a good price point um and if they want me if they want more say like 185k or closer to the listing price of 189 well then i'm gonna ask for closing i'm gonna ask for all of that stuff cut and trimmed like trees included and i'm gonna ask for them to remove all debris from the um uh what's it called from the barn itself because at this point, I have to actually go in that barn and clear it all out. 
like all of the, the they have like lighting fixtures and all types of other shit in there and it's just like I, I, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with this shit like I'm gonna get rid of most of it and get um you know uh, uh what's it called better lighting I should say in there uh what do they call that um more energy efficient lighting in there so I won't be using some of the lighting fixtures that they have um so it, it doesn't make sense for me to keep some of the stuff that they have because they have the actual, I think it's the ballast, uh, the thing that holds it, the whole canopy and everything, and then it holds the light bulbs. It's usually what you see in drop down ceilings and in like schools and such. So they have like big ones like that. I'm not going to use any of those. I'm going to reconfigure that whole barn and everything else like that over time. Um, you know, probably by the end of the first year, maybe I can actually get to some of that stuff. Maybe even later because uh, I have a plan in terms of what I want to try and do with um, uh, do in terms of finances uh, one of the first things I want to do uh, actually let me stay on this and I'll talk about my plan um, so yeah and then if they want the whole the 189 I'll be like listen man if that's the case I need you to remove this 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 whatever you know like y'all got to do some work like uh, I, I, I might say, hey, listen, I'll give you 177 k and y'all do no work whatsoever. I handle everything over the years of me living there because I'll do the shit. So um, we'll see uh, what they say and what happens. Uh, I have to put in an offer. I'm just kind of formulating all that stuff and, you know, take, uh, you know, form, uh, uh, creating an approach to all of this and how I can handle it, doing some research on how to negotiate these things. Never done anything like this. Um, it seems like the realtor was impressed with the way I handled everything, all the questions I asked. Uh, she's like, hey, listen, you know, she's like, Mike, you're well informed. And I was like, great. I mean, there's some things I just don't know, and I just need you to fill in the blanks. She said, no problem. I already talked to the loan officer. I have to still wait on, and again, some of this stuff is contingent on if I can get the USDA rural loan, uh, meaning I don't have to put anything down. By me putting down like five, six grand, Literally, it knocks off a hundred something dollars off my payment. It's fucking peanuts. It's like nothing. So that's not a big deal. Although, you know, especially with PMI in there, PMI slash MIP in there, yeah, it helps a little bit. But to be honest, um, even with a 1250 payment and then just projecting some of my bills and stuff, my car insurance going down, uh, my energy use going down, I'll still have about like a um, close to $950 a month, even with my truck payment, I have about $950 a month to play with. And it's just like, if I have that, I'm just going to take that and double up on like, uh, I'm going to double up on like, uh, um, uh, well first I'm going to save, this goes into my plan, but I'll have $950 um, to kind of like work with and do other things with. So I I'll have money, you know, like thankfully. Uh, and that's just off of one job, not doing anything else. I do plan on doing some more uh, consulting and programming and stuff like, or contract work for programming. So that will come in handy, probably bringing me in maybe a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. Um, that'd be great. I'm, I'm hoping to actually gross that, maybe even net that uh, after taxes and such, like putting putting away for taxes. Um, so as far as my plan is concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm projecting probably having about $900, $950 free. If I can get that type of money free, I'm gonna first save up about five months of mortgage and bills, uh, especially fitting that all in. The bills will take a little bit longer if I add that, but at least five months of mortgage. So that'll be about, that'll be a little bit over six grand, right? Actually, yeah, under, like right under seven grand. So if I can get all that, then cool. Then, take uh you know if i can do the bills too or if i like you know i feel like i want to go ahead and do bills as well uh it would be good but having five to six months at least three months of bills would be great um then after that what i'll do is uh what else do i do uh i will take oh i will take that extra 950 and then actually put it towards uh my truck payment so my truck, I refinanced it, and uh, my payments are $150 less, so that was another good thing. But what I'll probably do is, in a sense, double that truck payment um, and put the $480 a month, which is what I, my payment is now, 
and then put another that other 900 950 on there uh, I should be able to pay off the truck which is like 23 grand left uh, they split it over four years so that 23 grand that I have left I, I did roll my payment in from my BMW that I had left on that uh, into the truck payment um, I didn't have to like I just, I, I just did a trade-in I don't know how I feel I don't feel too bad about that I mean it is what it is I wanted to get out of the car because of uh, uh, what's it called the, the warranty was up on it and I wanted to get rid of it uh, with the least amount of pain possible in a sense to me you know you're gonna pay for it sooner or later so I am um, but anyways so uh, taking that into account I should if I can actually do the 900 and put all that away and you know budget myself properly and stay within that it'll probably take me 16 to 18 months I can pay off the truck like I can pay off the truck while still paying mortgage and having that cushion for uh, anything happening to uh, my employment so it's like that'd be great um, and still have the home and everything else like that right small town living there's not much I'll be doing around there I'll probably be playing more video games than anything and then I can start really uh, taking away making improvements to the home um, I just got to be patient with it I probably totally won't it depends if I do get more money from contract work I definitely will be making some of those improvements at the same time um, or just like you know like saving up for some and getting estimates and stuff like that um, so yeah that would be really good uh, uh, what's it called yeah if I could still get an extra 1500 to two grand a month uh, after taxes for um, for contract work uh, man that will be freaking sweet you know like I can do a lot with that in terms of um, putting it towards other things you know so we'll see yeah, uh, we'll see on that. I, I think that's going to turn out fairly well. Uh, I don't want to scare or be rude in terms of like my offer, but at the same time, if I can get away with it, I mean, $1,100 is what I'm looking at, even with 3% down. Uh, and them covering closing costs, like, that, fuck that, I'll take it. Um, and that's $1,100 a month for... Uh, I, and I said in earlier in the video that it was under it was just over 1600 square foot square, square feet it's actually 1696 square feet um, for the total home itself uh, or pretty much uh, under roof or under ceiling uh, so that uh, I mean that's all pretty good for especially for a bachelor pad and sitting on 15 acres with other buildings and sheds and stuff like that already on the property um, I'd probably move the sheds around or had them in a different place but they didn't so whatever um, and go from there I, I think uh, putting in this offer and trying to you know uh, you know put the money to put it under contract and start working on contingencies and stuff like that uh, or not contingencies but <laughs> start working towards handling any uh, issues or anything else like that uh, I think it'll be good we'll see what happens I uh, I like this place and um, the drive is not so bad when I actually sleep sadly I just I couldn't really sleep I was uh, probably thinking about all this and also I don't sleep well in other places uh, and it's like not my own home I don't feel comfortable and I don't get good sleep. So I literally, I'll sleep for an hour, wake up and be like, this is not where I should be. I must go. So um, that's partially what happened. So pretty much drove all day yesterday, uh, well over 12 hours of just driving back and forth and or from out of Florida into Georgia, looking at the two listings and maybe had like a maybe 10 or 20 minute nap in between all that when I first got there and got into a hotel. Um, and then saw the first property and then drove two hours after that uh, into mid Georgia right under Atlanta uh, the McDonough area to look at that one distressed property and um, then coming then like real just turning around like I don't know what the fuck was in me I I turned right around and started driving back another two hours south 
back to the uh, Econo Lodge, which, you know, you get what you pay for with Econo Lodge, but that shit was crazy. And what you're seeing is, or what I saw was, um, I saw the distress and the problems that are happening for hotel owners. Literally, I had my watch, my gun, and my like, my and some other stuff in a drawer. I opened the drawer as I'm getting ready to check out. First off, the bathrooms are dirty. Doesn't look freaking good. Like I think one bathroom downstairs, I think it had smeared shit. I think there's uh, shit smeared on the wall. Like you can kind of see it. It looks like a weird color. And I'm like, yeah, I think that shit. That was disgusting. Like literally, the rest stops that I, I on the highway, those bathrooms smelled better and looked better than this hotel bathroom. I was like, holy fuck, this is bad. And again, it's an Econo Lodge. I paid $80 for the room. I was maybe there, you know, only a couple hours. I did not stay there that long. Like, I'm joking with my homegirls, and I was like, yo, I think there was AIDS on the pillow. I'm not gonna freaking lie. It was like, I, like, the pillows weren't disgusting, but it's just like, yo, room service is not doing what they're supposed to. But at the same time, who's room service? And that room service person is probably doing every room in that hotel where they used to only probably do a half or a third of all of that. And they probably only have them do it once a, once a day. I'm talking my bathroom was nasty. The countertops weren't even uh, wiped down on the uh, little dresser drawer by the, the, the nightstands, I should say, by the bed. And I was just like, yo, this is crazy. And then, as I said, in that drawer with all my like little stuff, I open it, two baby roaches, bro. Two baby fucking roaches in a drawer with no food in it. The food that I had, which was like some smart food, cheddar popcorn, I had that in the fridge along with the Gatorade. That thing had a seal on it. No roaches getting in there. Two baby roaches. Just, just, just hanging out in the drawer. I was like, yo, I wore socks the whole time in that room, but again, I, you get what you pay for and one of the reasons why I went there is because I knew I wasn't gonna stay there long so that was that checkout I uh, that, everything everything was okay until I saw the roaches and I was just I had to tell the guys like listen bro I understand this is a kind of lodge but that's crazy <laughs> that's a drawer no food in it that's wild shit but you can see how like things are just really bad and that's that's what we're seeing in that's what we're seeing in America right now. That's what, you know, these hotel owners have to deal with. I was watching a video a moment ago, and this leads into house prices and me trying to make this deal and me trying to think like, okay, what can I get away with? I don't want to cut, cut them down to 20, cut them down by 20 grand. If I do that, like, I don't even think they should cover closing costs. I fucking wouldn't. Anyways, um, you never know, you could do it. But, um, I was listening to, uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name, man. Uh, the I think it's like the, the something GPS, the money GPS, I think it is, or financial GPS. He, he has a, another channel called Amazon GPS. But anyways, he, he does like finance reports and stuff like that. Year over year, the delinquencies on, on hotel mortgages has shot up from 1.3% to about 23, 26%, no, 23.6%. Hotel mortgages, meaning these hotel owners, they can't, I mean, I'm sure you know what it means, but I gotta do it for like effect. They can't afford to pay their mortgages on their hotel, the, the loans for their hotel, which means they can't even keep the, the workers hired. Workers probably have pay cuts, workers probably have to work, um, extra shifts and stuff like that or to cover shifts you probably only have two people at the front desk to cover 24 hours whereas before it was uh, three people for in eight hour shifts you know these are the things that are happening that we all have to deal with and that these people have to deal with in that industry and I, it's like okay you know you know when was the last and I mentioned it to the guy at the front desk and he was talking about, yeah, you know, I don't know the last time they had the exterminator out here. And I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yo, they probably can't even afford an exterminator. Holy fuck. Like, yo, that's some wild shit. 
You can't afford an exterminator, my dude? Whoa. That, that, that really, yeah, that hit home right there, bro. I had, a, like, I was just gone. So anyways, I, I did, I couldn't sleep, and then I started to really feel the effects of all that driving I did on Saturday. Uh, I mean, I just, I just didn't sleep much on Friday either. I was excited, I guess, and then on Saturday too, um, I didn't sleep, I, of course I didn't sleep much because I was driving, and so I stopped probably about four times and added about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes to this whole drive, just between me sleeping and stops and all this other stuff. But um, yeah, almost home, I'm probably about an hour out. It's just like 45 miles or something like that. Yeah, I should reach home around, it's 9.06 right now. I'll probably reach home closer to 10 o'clock. So, yeah, that's my trip. Uh, that's what happened and this is what we're, uh, that's what I'm looking to do is uh, get my first property. And on that property, uh, you know, uh, I still talk with Wilsonian uh, Garveyite uh, from BGS, uh, BGS's channel. And um, he was just asking me, hey, what are you gonna do with all that? And you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm gonna build a shop and workshop and some other stuff. You know, a nice man paradise, if you will. Because I plan on doing some more stuff, especially with the agricultural technology thing. Um, you know, being out there, being alone, uh, definitely would help me focus a little bit. Not that I couldn't do it here, but I could actually, uh, I hope to spread my wings more over time and probably connect with other farmers in the area and probably drive out to some farms and to see, you know, how I can test my agricultural technology and, you know, get information from them. Anyways, we'll see about that. Um, that'll be something that I definitely want to do. Um, eventually, what else do I want to do? Oh, eventually I do want to build a uh, solar farm on the property as well. So actually, getting a whole bunch of solar panels in a nice area of a uh, corner of the property um, and start harvesting some solar energy to cut down or eliminate totally my energy bill and then also uh, start my whole grow uh, and see how that affects my, see how I can use it in terms of um, my uh, the grow box project and see what I can do with that. Uh, I think that's going to be very expensive uh, to generate as much solar as I'm thinking. Um, but I don't, I mean, there won't be much in terms of what I have to do. Uh, uh, what's it called? Like maybe even get like a Tesla Powerwall, which would be freaking excellent. Um, but there won't be much that I have to do in terms of, um, uh, what's it called? Man, I'm trying to think here. There won't be much in terms of what. Oh, there won't be turn. There won't be a lot of uh, energy usage on my part because it's just me. You know, like I'll have some stuff running, but there's other things I have to do to secure the place too. Uh, uh, I'm kind of on the outskirts of town in Albany, Georgia. Uh, that's like where that property is. But you know, I heard there's a lot of shootings and stuff like that. At the Econo Lodge, there was like a whole bunch of kids acting up and getting all rowdy and shit. So, that was kind of crazy. Um, but, yeah, supposedly it's kind of like, sad to say, it's it's the hood. It, it, that's supposedly Albany, Georgia. In the city, in the city proper is the hood. On the outskirts, don't really shit go on out there. But what I did like is um, I do like the the drive around that area is nice. And then I uh, went to uh, one of the stores. Uh, what store did I go to? Uh, uh, Mike's Grocery Store or something like that. And that was really, uh, really, really nice grocery store. I'm talking like the meats that they had. Oh, my God. I can't wait to barbecue over there, bro. So I'm definitely going to put in this offer, work to make sure that I can get this damn property. And I'm not fucking around. I'm trying to get this shit. If I have to sell most of my stocks, everything except for Tesla, um, I, I will do so. If I have to sell my silver, sadly, I will do so. Uh, silver's always been a long-term bet for me, but uh, this property, I, I, 
I'm not a person that moves a lot, so this might be a forever home for me. Shit might change, get kids, all this other stuff. But on 50 acre, 15 acres of land, I could build additions out the wazoo. I could build a whole nother freaking house. And then not even, like, that house is in the middle of the property pretty much. And there's like a whole other section right behind it that's just huge. Just huge. I can keep that house there and still have another house behind it. Like, it's just that much property is there on 15 acres. And my crazy ass was looking at 80 acres. And I would have got that bitch too if I, I could afford it. Like, if I had my second job still and they were st still paying me, or if I had steady, um, uh, steady income from uh, contracting and stuff like that still, uh, yeah, I probably would have tried. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. But it probably would have been too much, and um, I'm probably better off with this. Not the Dave Ramsey approach, but still trying to be conservative with it to a certain extent. I did not do it, quote unquote, the right Dave Ramsey way, but um, I do think it's manageable. So um, if I can definitely save up those first few months or first five or six months uh, worth of, um, uh, of, of cushion, uh, definitely could work for me. But um, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, I will be putting all these videos together. This is probably gonna be a lot, like a long bit. It's gonna be a long one. Um, but yeah, as always, thanks for listening. Peace. What's up? What's up? So, um, coming in after the last clip, got home safely. Uh, no problems there. Just by you know sleeping on the way in the different rest stops. That really helped of course and just got me home safely thankfully um so oh by the grace of by the grace of god by the grace of allah uh so i was uh i was just putting together all the clips you know nothing serious or nothing special you'll see that um but just putting all the clips together and i thought uh, about like you know what's happened since you know i got home um i've talked to the realtor i've uh given her my three different offers uh so i'm just gonna go over those three offers real quick and you know just the stipulations of each one of those offers um as far as, uh, essentially i sent it to her just to let her know hey listen this, this is what i'm looking at this is what i want to offer um for the for the property and um uh, first offer and you know she she wanted to like hey listen Mike why did you send it like this um I, I want to understand that a little bit and I said well you know I have three different offers for three different scenarios so you can say scenario you, so offer scenarios in this case are interchangeable uh, in my mind um so the first offer scenario is uh, 175k for the property um my biggest thing is that the property itself is uh not clean in terms of like the actual plot of land the home beautiful picturesque perfect there's no problems with that home uh, i probably have to pay a cleaning lady to go in there i mean i can do it myself but i'll probably play a pay a cleaning lady to get in there and clean the home from top to bottom um top to bottom so clean the home from top to bottom to get everything looking the way um or make it a little bit more moving ready and you know get all the dust and everything else out so all i have to do is worry about getting in there simply because i have to drive so many hours i don't have much time while i'm up there because excuse me most of the time i turn right back around and drive back so i don't want to be uh i really don't feel like dealing with cleaning and certain other aspects i want to go there do one or two things that i have to do maybe wait for a person uh maybe even do some uh, furniture shopping uh just to get what I'm going to do is uh, get some appliances, some used appliances to start out. Um, some used appliances to start out and go from there. Um, with the, uh, with that being said, with the used appliances, probably get a used washer and dryer. Uh, something cheap just to get in there. I don't really need anything crazy. Uh, it's not a big deal for me. I know it's something that in time I can get a better washer. I can get a better dryer. I don't give a flip. I'm trying to get in there as cheap as possible and spend money in other places that I think is important. Especially as me me as being um, a bachelor, single person moving into this home. I got no kids. I got no girl. I got nobody saying, oh, well, you know, 
It should look like this. Fuck you. You pay for it. Fuck out of here. So, um, I know my mom's going to say something. My dad, like, uh, other people. Oh, you need to get this and this. Well, you need to... Just playing. I probably will say that to her. Though. Um, but me and my mom have a good relationship. So, like, it's kind of... It's like a it's a love playful hate relationship. So we'll go off on each other and then we'll hug and kiss it out after that. Cause love my mama. Um, sorry for the chair and the noise is like squeaky. So get a get used appliances, get used things where possible, just to get in there and get set up. What I've done since um, since I've gotten back, you know, uh, I stayed up for a little bit longer and everything like that, and finally crashed. Um, probably got about two or three hours worth of sleep. Um, but what I did is I started texting the uh, realtor and then we had a phone conversation about my offers and everything else like that and what I um, what I'm trying to put forward here. Uh, in terms of you know her professional opinion and everything like that, she wanted to go with the higher offer first, but then she called so she could understand what I'm talking about and my thoughts on it. And she says, oh, I see what you're saying, Michael. Um, we can go with the lower offer first and see what they say. So to explain the offers slash scenarios, finally, 175K. In each one of these offers and scenarios, the, buy, the seller always pays the closing costs. That's what I'm trying to go negotiate into this deal. I do not want to come out of my pocket for closing costs. Um, I could take that money, put it towards something else, and honestly, it's just going to be added, and I'm financing that in a sense in the loan. Because even though sellers say they pay closing costs, really you're paying it because it's financed into the loan. Like they're just going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, just take it out of you know that money over there, and the closing cost may be like five. Uh, uh, I think it's uh they said the usual average is like two to four percent of the actual loan amount. So in my case, let's see. I was told it's going to be about six, six grand, but I think that's off. I'm not sure. So in my case, if it's uh, seven, 175 grand, we'll say times 0 0.104. That's a lot. Um, 175 grand times 0 0.04. Sorry, 104 just adds, um, adds the percentage to the actual value that you just multiplied by. So it would be the 175 plus um 0.04 percent and then it would actually give you that total of like the percentage that that the the value of the percentage plus the value of the original um amount that you just multiplied by if you do 1.0 whatever the percentage or one point whatever the percentage it'll actually put it in there so if i put uh 175 grand times um point or 10 percent or 0.10 um it would be 17.5 right that'll be the percentage and it would add that to the little quick math thing i learned a long time ago some people know it some people don't it's an easier way instead of just figuring out a percentage and then adding it so uh 1.75 that would be about seven grand right so they would actually go ahead and um put down that seven grand and go from there uh and that's at the high end at four percent in terms of closing costs and everything like that now uh, you can shop around for closing costs you can get better closing costs in terms of uh maybe uh you can get a person that does the titles a little bit cheaper maybe you know somebody's going to do the title work for you a little bit cheaper uh you can get somebody that can do um other parts of it due diligence or whatever a little bit cheaper as well um so there's that and again the four percent is on the high end side uh 175.02 times it's like 3.5 grand or so. Yeah, I just did that wrong. 0.02. Yeah, 3.5 grand. So, um, you know, I'm looking at 3.5 on the sh low end to about 7 grand on the high end. As I've been told, it's going to be right about in the middle of that, around 6 grand, or kind of whatever I put down for the property. Um, there are stipulations in or restrictions, I should say, in terms of what the seller can actually contribute to closing cost. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I guess because it actually factors into the price of the home itself um, and what the, the seller's price is. So uh, I believe for FHA, the seller can contribute up to 3% of closing costs. So they might do a majority of it. Say out of the six grand, they might do five grand. 
and you come in with the other one grand. Um, I've heard that before. And then in some cases, if it's a USDA loan, they can do up to 6%. Um, so that really helps and that's really good. But essentially you're financing that into the loan because you know if I'm a seller, I'm already factoring that, factoring in that you want me to pay closing costs. I'm not paying shit, you are, thank you. Um, so that's usually how it works. That's kind of the, that's par for the course nowadays. Uh, you, you know, those closing costs are generated by you and it is something that in a sense you should be paying because that is, uh, those are all the steps needed in terms of due diligence and other work that needs to be done um, to make sure that this property is a, uh, a, a good investment or that every stone is, uh, no stone is, no stone is left unturned. So there's that. Now let's go on to the next one. Um, as I said, 175. Uh, all scenarios include covering closing costs, and we went through all that. 175 grand is no request. Um, I have no request for the property that the seller needs to do. They just, I just pay them 175 grand. They walk away, and I get every, I get have to do everything myself after the fact. Um, this is a little bit more uh, interesting a little bit more enticing to the seller because all they have to do is collect their money and get the fuck out you know they don't have to they don't have to oh well you know i don't like the way these cabinets look um you know can you take that out for price can you can can you get that renovated before they don't have to do shit they just take their money and go and that's pretty much it you know uh sign paperwork and get the fudge out um and leave you know leave the whole situation um, 180 grand. So putting five grand on top of that, I think this is fair. I think what's going to happen in this case with these requests, um, adding out of that five grand, three grand is going to be their cost. Two grand is probably something that they can keep for themselves, but giving them that cushion in there. Okay. Um, so five grand cover closing costs, mow entire plot of land. So I'm estimating probably about a hundred dollars per acre, probably even more, a uh, hundred dollars per acre for all 15 acres to be cut. Um, I really want to get that down to maybe a $75 per acre or so. I mean, it's quite a bit. There's a lot of other things that are in there, such as, you know, like uh, unseen logs, uh, le unseen logs and maybe even debris or something like that, that the uh, uh, whoever's going to be clearing the property has to worry about. You never know. Um, so pretty much in clearing, mow, uh, mow entire plot of land. Mow it. That doesn't mean remove debris or any tree limbs or anything like that. Just mow it because there are tree limbs and things falling. And then, of course, there's overgrowth and overhang. Um, so then that's 180 grand. Um, then the big one is 185 grand, essentially 175. And then you have $10,000 in terms of all the things that, you know, to a lot for all the different things that need to be done to the property to prepare for me as a, home, a new homeowner coming in and saying hey i want this to be done so on and so forth um there's a lot of things in terms of the home i think it's acceptable it's not what i in a sense want I, but i think it is as a turnkey moving into a home um first time home buyer i think it's perfect it really is i really do think it's perfect there's things that you can nitpick about but it's kind of like saying i don't like the color of the paint it's paint paint it over calm down you know, I don't like the cabinets. Perfect. I didn't want fucking. I didn't. That's one reason why I, you know, in one of the previous clips, you'll see that I, I went to this real, uh, this like shogunate, oriental feel, Asian feel home. I, I wanted that because I wanted to rip that sucker apart and do everything myself. I can. I'm thinking about that and I can smell it now. Jesus Christ, that place was disgusting. It's like, yo, how can you let things get like this? You never know. Shit happens. Anyways. I'm sure they didn't want that. It's sad. Um, it's really sad to see how that place like. Oof, I can feel it. Like I, there, I, I know, I, there, I know, ingested some mold in that. That was disgusting. Uh, or I breathed in some mold. Um, so 185 grand, again 175 plus another 10 grand to cover closing cost, mowing in the mowing the entire plot of land, dead and removing dead tree limbs and remove all debris from the barn and entire plot so the barn itself um i think it's in decent shape it looks good they did all the exterior stuff but on the inside uh it looks like absolute shit in terms of like um i don't like the configuration of everything but i can change that and that's up to me but they have debris in there they have 
um, like you know all these little strings and stuff like that. The strings and stuff will probably stay, but they have like I think they have like a, a whole the bathroom uh, vanity and everything else like that. When they remodeled the place again to flip it and get it ready for what we're um, for me in terms of like a, as a potential buyer coming in and saying, hey, I want this property. Um, when they went through all of that, they they just stuffed everything in the barn. There was no disposal or anything. So I'm like, yo, listen, I don't want to see this. I don't want this. You need to go and dispose of that. This is this is not me. I'm not dealing with this. And I shouldn't have to deal with that as a new buyer. Um, I believe that the home, if it's a turnkey home and I'm not expecting to do anything and you're expecting it to be, quote unquote, move in ready. Well, the barn is a part of the entire property. My problems are really with the plot of land and some of the things that are on it, not the actual home itself, uh, which, of course, resides on that plot of land. The home itself, I think, is fine. But in a property this large where it's 15 acres and you have um, 15 acres and you have additional buildings and uh, or a lot or 15 acre plot and an additional buildings, those things factor into the price of the actual property. Like if I had a dilapidate, dilapidated um, or dilapidated uh, barn, I would have to worry about repairing that barn, um, possibly demoing that barn and getting rid of it. And all the costs for that because you know you have there's costs in terms of all that junk i would have to pay to dump all that stuff so it's like i don't want to pay that as a new person coming in now if you want me to pay that coming in i'm gonna have to take some money off the price and then i can do it over time like really it's just you know as long as as long as there's no city or county ordinance coming by and saying hey you can't have this shit in there get it out it's a hazard then shit it could stay there for five years until i actually get the money to do it you know, so these are the things that I'm looking at. So um, remove all debris from the barn itself and the entire plot of land, meaning you would go through the plot of land. And if there's any car doors or parts that I didn't see because I didn't walk the entire 15 acres, well, um, which would have been a good idea. But it was uh, high grass, different elevations. I didn't really want to get into that with the realtor and everything like that. Um, and this is something I would probably discover over time. But, you know that land will be a lot better to traverse uh during the dry seasons but you know it's been, ra been raining out there so that grass is the grass itself is about a foot tall and then some of the weeds as i as you guys saw are about freaking my height and i'm five ten. some of them were taller than me i thought i thought them damn things was trees i thought they were saplings i was just like oh shit we got oak bitch this shit is high no that's weed <laughs> it's freaking amazing country living um and then I also, and I didn't say this, but I also think about the area, you know, like the area is not too bad, uh, but it's quiet, you know, and what I heard is Albany, Georgia is a bit of hood or a bit of the hood, if you will. And they have a lot, a lot. I even heard this from the lady at the Econo Lodge, which is crazy that Econo Lodge, I told you about that last time, but um, that area is known for quite a few shootings and things like that. Um, you know, what I usually like to do is visit the area and look around. You can see where their downtown area is, uh, needs to, ha has been run down. It's a city, it's somewhat of city forgotten. You know, it's a bit Trump territory is what it looks like. So, um, you have where a lot of things are unkempt, uh, are unkept and, um, uh, you know, people just don't have the money to make that city great again, if you will. So that's possibly MAGA country. Um, right across the street from the actual... I don't know if you want to come now. I can let you in. Okay. Uh, sorry, customer just uh, texted me back. Right across the street from the neighborhood, across... It's like, it's, I think it's like an Interstate 82 that runs through there. Maybe 19, I'm not sure. But... Um, Right across the street from uh, the neighborhood is a grocery store, like Mike's Grocery Store. Really do like it. I mean, the meat section is freaking beautiful. The, they do, like, uh, in-house sausages and stuff like that. Uh, most places do, but they had different types. They had you know, smoked bacon. So it was a nice country grocery store, different look and feel. Um, I was impressed. I really did like it. And having that right there it's like yo i don't have to go into town to Publix or something like that it's really it's kind of like having that corner store in your neighborhood but it's more it's a larger corner store it's a larger food mart or what have you you know so that was really nice i thought um in terms of me moving into that area that's a great amenity to have and then town is probably town downtown hotels and all that other stuff mcdonald's walmart um hair salons and things like that 18 minutes 
and uh, everything in Georgia, uh, especially in some of these smaller towns, is interstate driving. So you have to hop on the highway to get to this other spot. Um, really, I live I live in a city of plantation now. Currently, the population is probably about 82, uh, 82,000 people to 87,000 people or something like that. So um, this town is about 77,000 people from what I did a look up on. But the thing about Plantation is it's a city amongst other cities. It's a part of a greater metropolitan area. This city, Albany, is not. It is a city, and then you have a, it's a city amongst city. Lose that term loosely compared to what I'm coming from. Uh, it's a concrete jungle over here, if you will, or concrete space, not jungle. But um, it's a city amongst other towns in the area. So, and then, you know, a lot of stuff, like even my property is county property. It's not really city proper, you know, it's not really in the city. So, um, that's a nice thing. Some things are a little bit looser, uh, uh, unless you just have like somebody that's all over you or something like that, or a county that's really strict. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue. So that's really good. Um, we will see, of course, you know, there's a lot of things that there's a, we're at the beginning of this process and so much has already happened. Um, but there, uh, I think it's going to be good. Also, I did check, uh, internet in the area. I can get up to one gig speeds. I can bring my own modem so that can cut the price of the, um, price of the installation and everything down. Uh, I, it's from a provider called Mediacom and Mediacom, they rec they gave me the recommended Doxis 3.1 modem. Um, with Doxis 3.1, uh, they have they actually do about a gig uh, right now, fi uh, one gig down, 50 megs per second upload, um, and that's $92 if I do the rental of the modem. Now, if I bring my own device, that's $80 a month, and that's within the 12-month period, and then it goes up uh, $20 for subsequent years. So I'm looking at after the first year, I'll be paying like 100 something dollars a month, um, 112 if I use their device, 100 100 dollars flat. If I use my own, I'll be using my own, um, and just so I can avoid that, uh, just to avoid that uh, equipment fee, uh, which the equipment fee wasn't too much from what I remember. No, equipment fee is 12 dollars, just about thereabouts. So 12 dollar equipment fee. Um, and uh, that's really good. Installation fee about $99. Uh, there was service up to about February of this year at that home. So that means they'll bring a technician out to make sure everything is good, to make sure the line is good, and then um, test for speeds. And then I can just install my modem and go from there. So that's about a $100 charge just to get a technician to roll out there. Uh, I will be using them as my primary provider and then also bringing in AT&T as a secondary provider. In this case, I will be actually going for that expense of having two internet connections. One, I do like it, but at the same time, with working from home, it's it's very it's imperative it's necessary it's it's a it's a, 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 a it's mandatory that i always stay up in some way shape form or fashion for this to work for me not to have a problem with my employer and say hey my internet's down again no don't want to do that don't want to go through that it's going to be one of those things where, well maybe you need to move back or we're not going to actually keep on paying you so thinking about that and i just don't want that to be any static or problems so um, probably be paying close to 150 plus a month in just terms of internet uh, costs. Um, the $80 a month is for, again, the gigabit package. Uh, the 500 meg package um, is, oh, that gigabit package comes with a monthly allotment of six terabytes worth of data. The 500 meg package comes with, I think, four or three terabytes worth of data, probably four terabytes worth of data um, after that it is ten dollars every ten dollars every 50 gigs thereafter and over that allotment not too bad is what it is um, I don't really do a lot of downloading or anything else like that I do a lot of streaming of course on YouTube content and then of course I'm um, just work in general so I don't think I'll be anywhere near that I really don't because they have it for Comcast too and I'm never anywhere near that so uh, my usage will not change uh, for me personally, but it will be overall less because um, my mom uses the one in the home right now, of course, for TV and other things. Um, 
can run phone service over that, but I won't. Um, in terms of phone service, I did see that I had uh, decent coverage out there. I can always use Wi-Fi calling as well, so that's a possibility. I'll be putting in my own router and audio video equipment and things like that just to um, uh, just for the home itself, just to get everything started. So uh, I, that house will be a bit of a smart home. It's small enough to where I can do that fairly cheap and a little bit at a time running cables and everything like that and getting those terminated in every room. So that's going to be one of the first things I do and get done. Um, in terms of home improvement, also working on lighting and other stuff. I'm, there's a lot of things, but I got to get there, see how everything is. Um, make sure that I establish a cushion once I establish a cushion and everything is looking good Then I can move on to the other part of my plan, which is paying down the truck um, I just thought about it. I have if I can get in with not anything out of pocket if I can do the USDA loan Which would be freaking at amazing. I would suggest you guys look into the USDA loan essentially there's damn near nothing out of your pocket most of it's gonna be financed or essentially in the loan because by not doing a down payment then um, uh, that can change your mortgage insurance that could change all types of other things but the biggest thing is um your principal amount is larger meaning that you're going to have a higher mortgage payment but if you get a property where you can easily afford it all you have to do is just um all you have to do is just pay extra every month so i'll have extra every month is what i'm looking at now um so that's going to be good uh, but I think that's mainly it. You know, uh, the realtor has to sign, uh, starts to put, has to put together an offer letter. She has to talk with my loan officer. I gave her permission to talk to my loan officer. Uh, did that via email. You have to have a lot of these things in writing. Um, so now she'll go ahead and start putting an offer together. And then she has to talk to the loan officer to make sure that she gets the interest rates and everything else that I, that I have or that I qualify for, for this loan. Um, Again, I'll be I'll keep on documenting the process. I know this is a lot longer video than you know normal, if you will. Think of it as a vlog day with Mike type deal. Not too, nothing too short. It's a process, and if you watch the whole thing, great. I really do appreciate you know you spending that time. I understand this is therapeutic. This is venting for me, and this is also a way for me to think about everything that's going on and what I need to do to um, you know get get what I need done or get to the point of home ownership and I always try to put these things out not as just oh woe is me but as to hopefully hey woe is me don't do this hey this has worked out great go ahead and do this um as always thank you very much for listening peace